Good afternoon and welcome to the June 7th, 2017 meeting of the Thousand Oaks Commission on Aging. I'd like to ask Commissioner Norkin to please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, and may we have roll call now, please. Please stay here, present when I call your name. Commissioner Allen? Present. Chair Fotheringham is absent. Commissioner Gitt? Present. Commissioner Gorbach? Present. Commissioner Hagee? Here. Vice Chair Healy is absent. Commissioner Maria? Here. Commissioner Mortimer? Here. And Commissioner Norkin? Here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And now we'll have public comments. And I have one public speaker card from Mike Hauser, who is going to speak on behalf of the City of Thousand Oaks and give us a transit update. In Council, uh, Mike Hauser, City of Thousand Oaks. I'm the Transit Program Manager for the City uh, that's under the uh, Public Works Department. It's always a, a pleasure to be here and I, to give you an update on sort of some of the things that are happening in transit, some of the things that uh, we're planning on here in the upcoming year. Uh, I'll s just pretty much take these in chronological order, starting off with uh, it's going to be the fifth year of our summer beach bus program, which will be available uh, from the 19th of this month through August 18th, with the exception of July 3rd and 4th. If you've ever been to the beach uh, during that time period, you know how difficult it is to get in and out of there. So uh, we do have um, 10 ride passes available at a discount. And what's really nice about this service, it's only $3 each way, or for seniors, it's only $1.50 each way. So for $3 round trip, go all the way down from Thousand Oaks down to Zuma Beach, very nice area. Snack shack, snack shack, lots of places to, uh, to to sit out and watch the beach, and there's some restaurants across the street. Uh, we depart, uh, we do at least two round trips a day, and on Thursdays and Fridays, we do three round trips, and they, those buses depart from the Borchard Community Center and the Teen Center, which is right next door to the Senior Center. Um, we also have a travel training uh, program coming up uh, this uh, June uh, 15th at 12.30 at the Senior Center. I believe there are still a few slots available for that. It is a, it's kind of, it's a small room, so we have to sort of limit the number of people we do. It's, this has been a highly successful program that the Council on Aging has been sponsoring for a number of years. We've literally had hundreds of people go through this program, so the next session, so I would encourage you, if you have any interest at all in learning more about transit in general, and specifically the dial ride programs and some of the other pr alternative transportation programs that are out there, such as, and I'll use, the, the, we call them transportation network companies. You know them as Uber and Lyft. Uh, we will have a presentation on that as well as somebody from the DMV to talk a little bit about their ombudsman program, if I got that right. And unfortunately, I have to get these out now. I can't get by anymore without these sometimes. Um, inner city service, um, the inner city program uh, for seniors and ADA is going very well. We continue to see really strong ridership, about 1,300 rides a month that we're providing on that service. So if you are a resident in Thousand Oaks, uh, Simi Valley, or um, Moore Park, and in the county unincorporated areas, you can use this service to travel anywhere within those areas, as well as the city of Camarillo, Oak Park, and Westlake Village. And, and uh, I note that uh, we were really expecting seniors to make up about half of our ridership, and right now it's only about a quarter. So if you are a senior and you have our ADA card, if you're in the city of Thousand Oaks, or if you're age 65 and over in the other communities, I highly encourage you to at least Try it once to see what it's like, to see if it's something that uh, you can use. You know, you don't have to use it on a regular basis. We're happy to take you for that occasional trip as well. You just need to sign up is all before you take your first ride. Um, there are some route changes that will be coming uh, to our route, specifically impacting the Senior Center, which is on the green route. Because the uh, school district is moving the continuation high school from Newberry Park to the through their headquarters that's across the street from the senior center and the library complex, we will be changing the routing of the green route so that currently it does clockwise loops every two hours. 
two buses, so they're spaced 60 minutes apart. We're going to change that, and the buses are going to go in both direction, clockwise and counterclockwise, with what we call headways of one hour instead of two hours. So that'll be a change that'll be taking place uh, in late August. It should make, uh, particularly for people that are living in the east part of Thousand Oaks, much easier for them to get to the senior center, because before you had to transfer at the Oaks and then follow the whole path around until it came over. Now you'll be able to board at the Oaks Mall and be there in less than 20 minutes. So that's that's I th we think that's going to be a real good plus. Um, one of the things that we talk about uh, as part of our travel training is the volunteer driver reimbursement program that allows folks that maybe dial a ride isn't quite right for them. They need to go to an area where dial a ride doesn't serve, or perhaps a time of day, maybe late in the evening or very early in the morning. There is a program that is available to you. Uh, that you can uh, sign up for. It's an application-based uh, program, and then you can use this service. And what it is is you find somebody that can drive for you, and that gives you an opportunity to reimburse them for their costs. And if anybody's interested in that, I'm going to give this out, give this web address out for this one, and then TOTV is going to have some other ones that they're going to post for me in just a minute. But this particular one is www.goventura, all one word, dot com. And that is sort of the portal for anything that has to do with the volunteer driver program or to sign up for the Americans with Disability Act ADA program. A couple more, just a couple more things in brief. Um, VCTC, which is the inner city bus service, those are the light blue buses that you see running around all over the county. They just did some route changes here. Uh, May 22nd, so if you're an occasional rider and maybe have a brochure that you picked up last year or something, the, ride, the, the times and the routes have changed slightly, so I would encourage you if you intend to use that service or need to use it, go online to that address that I just gave you and get the most current uh, route schedule, or if you happen to be by the Transportation Center, which is over at the intersection of the 101 and 23 freeways, you can pick up their brochures there as well. Um, Lastly, um, it's been in the news a little bit lately, and I think some of you may have read some articles in the ACORN. The city's been doing a, a community attitude survey, and one of the things that was touched upon and one of the responses they got back was uh, communities' um, um, satisfaction with um, transportation services and what the city's spending on those. And one of the things that came back was that uh, there seems to be a majority of residents who feel that the city should probably not be spending as much on transit as it currently is. And so one of the things that we will be looking at as part of that process is to see, you know, the services that we currently do offer and if there's, if there's some changes that need to be made. Now, it should be uh, noted that the city itself doesn't spend any of its its money, and when I say its money, I talk to general fund, the same thing that pays employee salaries, for police and fire, and all the other things that the city does. Almost all of our funding comes from the federal or state government and the fares that folks pay. So it'll be, we will be working uh, with this process as long, along with our transit master plan, which has been in development for uh, the last, we've been working on it for close to three years. That will be going to council this fall. Um, the consultant that we've hired has 27 recommended improvements to our transit program, of which staff has reviewed, and, and, and we see about 10 of those that we feel are ones that are, we should seriously look at and give some consideration to. And it runs the gamut from making improvements to how we take a dollar ride reservations, for instance, allowing people to make online reservations, to making changes to the bus routes and adding bus routes, to perhaps uh, uh, utilizing services like the Ubers and Lyfts to offer alternative services to maybe to neighborhoods that where that can't support a regular bus route but still need transportation services. So there'll be a lot of that that we'll be looking at. So a couple of uh, addresses that uh, ho they can hopefully can pop up on the screen. If you want to find more information about Thousand Oaks Transit and the services that we offer, that is www.totransit, all one word, dot org. We always like to hear from riders and residents as well, so you can email us at totransit at toaks.org which is the city's 
uh, web portal. And then finally, if you want to know any information about the draft transit master plan, that information is also available online. You can go to our website and click the link, or it's also available at TO Transit Master Plan. Dot com, all one word. And you can read up on some of the recommendations that the consultant made. And also just to see how good a lot of the services are that we do offer as they compare to other agencies. So I thank you very much uh, for your time and everybody enjoy a good summer and we hope to see you on the beach bus. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hauser. We have a question from Commissioner Gitz. Um, I want to confirm that uh, surfboards are welcome on the beach bus. Uh, they are, but we do, be, for safety reasons, we do have to limit to two, and no longer than six and a half foot. And but, but the buses that we're using actually have luggage racks on board. So if you want to bring a small cooler, some beach chairs, umbrellas, those sort of things, uh, we're more than happy to assist you with that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner Kitt, you are a surfer. Oh, so sorry, Commissioner Allen. Yeah, I just want to make a, a real a push for the reimbursement. To, I'm able to take a friend who needs treatment at City of Hope for the driver reimbursement. And she also has a husband who's uh, disabled. So they both are able to go around Thousand Oaks and get reimbursed for part of their um, gasoline prices. So it's a wonderful, wonderful program. Thank you. Good. And I will have, I'm sorry, I forgot to bring them. I will have some brochures for the beach bus before you leave today. Great. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Hauser? Okay. Thank you very much. You know, before we go on with the rest of our meeting, I would just like to take a minute to, to publicly thank Commissioner Harry Norkin. This is his last public meeting with the Thousand Oaks Council on Aging after 18 years of dedicated outstanding service and and I'd like to thank you Harry as a fellow writer I know you are a writer and so am I and I will tell you when I need something proofread I send it to Harry because he has an eagle eye and he knows English and he knows how things should be written and he is really terrific and I have really appreciated working with you over the last last few years that I've been on the council Would anyone else like to like to say anything Thank you, Karen. Thank you very much. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll go on with our meeting now, and the next report I'm going to deliver on education. And as I've mentioned, I think I mentioned last month that summer is summer is a really good time to try something new because a lot of times the classes are a little smaller, the pace is a little slower, and and it's a lot of fun. So let me just point out a few things that are happening locally that you might enjoy. And beginning with our awesome library, pick up these are brochures that are in the lobby of the library and there's a section on here called summer events for adults and they include a class on how to use biblioboard which is an online application where you can um, pick up all types of fiction or graphic novels or comics or history and digital contents of every way, shape, or form, but it helps to learn how to use it properly. So this class is going to be held at the Newberry Park Library. Then there's going to be a lecture and a book signing by Rick Roberts, who is known from um, working with the Fly and Burrito Brothers, Stephen Still Stills Band, Linda Ronstadt's band, and he's written a couple of books. His first is called Lame Brain, which recalls his recovery from a traumatic brain injury, and then Song Stories and Other Left-Handed Recollections recounts his music career. So you'll want to look for that. That's coming up this month on Wednesday, June 21st. Then there's the Adult Coloring Hour, very relaxing. On a, on a one Friday each month, again, pick up a brochure or look online. There is going to be a 3D printing class. There's a printer over in the training room in which you can learn how to print objects, not just documents, but objects. How cool is that? So those are a few of the things happening at the library. Let me also mention to you, of course, Goebel, and we have we have Patty Ham here from Goebel Center, but let me just mention there's always something wonderful happening at Goebel. Line dancing, swing dancing, ukulele, guitar, mandolin, watercolor, Instagram, learn how to learn how to use Twitter. Maybe you can talk to the president on Twitter. Learn how to use Facebook. 
lots of wonderful things at the Goebel Center. Then the Conejo Valley Adult School, and I put some brochures at the back for those of you who are in our audience today. Always something wonderful at Conejo Valley Adult School, really easily located off Montgomery in the center of Thousand Oaks. Spanish, French, Italian, Chinese, chair yoga, tai chi, computer graphic, come on now, come on, take a class. Let me, and I'll share with you what I shared with Commissioner Git um, before the meeting started. I am a volunteer for the, um, for the Conejo Valley Village, along with Commissioner Git, along with Commissioner Allen and Commissioner Healy, who's not here. But in order to be a volunteer call manager, I had to learn how to use a new database because that's what we use when people call to sign up for, um, for events and, and we use it for all types of things. And I will tell you that I am no technology whiz. I mean, anybody knows that. I, that's not one of my strong suits, but I trained for three weeks to learn how to use this new database and I still don't know the whole thing, but every time I learn a little something new on it, it feels great and I love it. And I look forward to volunteering every week because I can use this brand new skill. So learn something new this summer, you won't regret it for a minute, okay? That's the end of my report. And I would like now to call on Commissioner um, Maria, who is going to talk about one of our local social services. Thank you. And with summer approaching, it's a great time to get out on your patio, get out into your yard, and you still want to stay in touch with what's going on. And it's a wonderful opportunity, if you haven't already, to really look into our local public radio, KCLU. Um, KCLU is kind of our NPR for the California coast, and it's a service of California Lutheran University, so it's very local to Thousand Oaks. It provides around-the-clock programming, and it was established back in 1994, and today it's serving up to 130,000 weekly listeners, so it's really grown rapidly over a short period of time. The service extends from Westlake to San Luis Obispo, so potentially if you're taking the beach bus, you may also be able to take your radio and listen to some things going on there. Um, oh, I have to do, I'm multitasking, okay. Uh, just, if you're not familiar with NPR, here's just a few of the programs, and, and they really are wonderful. Um, there's On Point, there's Here and Now, there's Fresh Air, where they always talk to the latest authors, musicians, um, Marketplace, Prairie Home Companion with Garrison Keller. Um, they're very nice, and then they also have the news shows, so all evening long um, into the wee hours of the morning, you can listen to the BBC World Service. Um, they have a morning edition of news and also a weekend edition of news, and much, much more. So I really would recommend that you get in touch with some of the NPR radio programming if you haven't listened to it already. Um, you can support KCLU, and one of the ways to do it, obviously, is through donations. You can become a sustaining men member. You can go actually join KCLU as a membership, and you pay every year to, to um, sustain that. You can do a one-time online pledge. You can also do planned giving, estate planned giving, or you can do vehicle donations. So there's several ways to donate uh, financially to KCLU. But more importantly, if you're interested in volunteering, they always need volunteers. Um, they do several phone drives. If you've ever listened to or watched um, public TV or listened to NPR, they do a lot of public uh, pledge drives. And so they're always looking for volunteers to help answer the telephones, et cetera, during their membership drives. So it's a great way to get involved. And the way that you can get in touch with them, I've got the address there. They're located on Olson Road. Uh, suite 4400 on 60 West Olson Road. Their phone number is 805-493-9200. But the best way is just to go online. It's kclu.org, O-R-G, and you can do anything you want there. You can make donations, you can join as a member, or you can get more information and direct contact on how you can become a volunteer. So I really encourage everybody to check it out if you haven't already. 
that's all I got. Okay, thank you very much. I've been volunteering at KCLU to sit on the phone bank every October and March for the last several years, and it is really, really fun. You know, you do that for enough time, you start to see the same people year after year, but the people who phone in are just the greatest people in the world, and the staff at KCLU is so appreciative, and you would enjoy it. Think about volunteering once, twice a year, an hour, two hours, whatever works in your schedule. And thank you very much for that excellent report. Okay, we'll go on now to liaison reports. And the first one is with the Ventura County Area Agency on Aging. I am the representative along with Chair Fotheringham and uh, Vice Chair Healy. And since they're not here today, I'm going to give this report. And um, on May 24th, the Ventura County Area Agency on Aging hosted a caregivers conference at the Oxnard Marriott. And I was there and there were over 300 people in attendance and it was really wonderful. The keynote speaker was um, a motivational speaker. His name is Jean Steele. And she talked about the importance of self-care. You know, caregivers are the most amazing people in the world, and they spend so much time taking care of others. And her message was, along with that, caregivers need to find time to take care of themselves. And she gave several practical strategies for doing just that. It was really, really wonderful motivational conference and then at the may meeting of the um of the advisory committee they awarded their first annual optimal aging awards and the purpose of the awards is to bring attention to the importance of aging optimally or successfully and and these awards showcase examples of extraordinary individuals and organizational achievements in optimal aging and this is going to become an annual celebration the first one was in may and the optimal aging award for an individual i'm happy to say went to our very own harry norkin congratulations yay was very very proud moment uh, the optimal aging award for an organization went to the Camrio Healthcare District the award for advocacy and leadership for an individual went to Suze Montgomery of Ventura the award for advocacy and leadership for an organization went to the long-term care services of Ventura County the leadership award for a dementia friendly organization went to Conejo Valley Senior Concerns, also another local organization. Yay! <laughs> and the age friendly media award went to the Ventura Breeze newspaper. And finally, the Shining Star Award for innovation went to Chris and Randy Martin, Home Watch Caregivers of Thousand Oaks. So, yay! <laughs> Thousand Oaks did really, really well in the first annual Optimal Aging Awards, and we'll wait to see what happens next year. And I'd like now to call upon Patty Ham, who is going to report both on the Senior Volunteer Program as well as upcoming events at the Gobel Adult Community Center. Patty. Turn it on. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners. I'd like to start off with um, letting you know about the uh, this Saturday, the Conejo Senior Volunteer Program will be having its 2017 Theater Fest. It's a fundraiser for CSVP, and they will be at the Conejo Players Theater where you will be able to purchase a ticket for $20 and see the Social Security um, play there. And at 1 o'clock, they'll have a wine reception, 2 p.m. the curtains will open and then after the show there'll be a raffle and um, the tickets are $20 and you can purchase them at the front desk at the Global Center. Um, we do have a limited number of tickets. Um, tickets uh, that aren't sold by Friday evening we will have them at the door Saturday uh, and you could purchase tickets at the door if they are available and a portion of the sales again go to support CSVP. And I'm told that it's, it's a very good play and it's very funny. Jim Searden, the expert in the audience here, told me that it was very good. So I encourage everyone to go. The Global Adult, 
Adult Community Center has some very exciting things happening this summer. But first, I'd like to take the opportunity uh, on behalf of CSVP, um, the Global Adult Community Center, and CRPD to thank Harry Norkin so very much for your many years of service to the community. And <laughs> yes. Um, for being an, uh, a true advocate for seniors and giving seniors a voice in the community and your work on the Global Senior Center Commission um, as well as the Council on Aging. Thank you, Harry, from all of us. Um, summer Barbecue is coming up Friday, uh, s June 16th at 5 p.m. at the Global Center. Tickets are $9, and you can purchase those at the desk. And we'll have a live band. We'll have dinner and dancing and lots of fun uh, to kick off the summer. Um, we also will be having um, Annette Brower's Bozma of the Reserve coming to the Global Center and presenting How to Choose a Senior Community. Uh, she will be bringing speakers to present info that will help seniors or children of seniors to decide where to start when planning senior living. It will be Friday, June 16th from 1 to 2.30, and you can call the Reserve at 492-2471 for reservations. Uh, the Conejo Valley Village will be hosting a drop-in recruiting event at Gopal this month on Tuesday, June 20th from 5 to 7. So I encourage everyone to come. And if you haven't heard of the Caneo Valley Village or you're interested to find out more information, I encourage you to come that evening and uh, find out and sign up. Um, lastly, uh, water exercise. We have a water so wa free water exercise program that starts in June. And on Mondays and Wednesdays at the Thousand Oaks Pool, Tuesdays and Thursdays at the Newberry Park Pool from 12 to 1. This is for seniors 50 plus. It begins Monday, June 19th and goes through Thursday, August 17th. And we have water aerobics exercise classes for seniors. So you can go four times a week during the summer, during the eight weeks of summer if you'd like for free. Um, for one hour and the pool is nice and it gets nice and hot out and it's refreshing and it's good exercise and it's good for your joints and good for your body and good for your mind. So I encourage all of our seniors to come and enjoy and uh, I happen to be one of the instructors on Monday and Wednesday at the TO Center so come and, come and join me. And we play uh, awesome music from the 50s and the 60s and it's a lot of fun. Thank you. Great, thank you very much, Patty. And now we have um, time for commissioner comments. Do we have any commissioner comments? Yes, Commissioner Norgan. Thank you, Karen. And as, as you know, this is my last day on the council sitting up here on the dais. And when I, after all the accolades, I had the speech, <laughs> but I'm not gonna give it because <laughs> I, I, I couldn't improve on what they have said to me, but I want to say that I want to thank the City Council for letting me serve all of those 16 years that I've been on the Council. I also want to thank all those I have worked with all those years and for such wonderful and caring people. And most of all, I want to thank Francine Spriegel for being there for all of us whenever we needed her. And, and I'm not going. I will be around in spirit mostly, but You'll still hear from me from letters to the editor every now and then. <laughs> but as, as I sit here now and I look out and I see the faces out there, I'm happy to have served for so long. Thank you all and goodbye. Thank you very much, Commissioner Norkin. And now we are going to the part of our program um, with our very special program with some guest speakers, and I'd like to turn the, um, this part of the program over to Commissioner Mortimer. Thank you, and I'd like to introduce Jim Searden, our 2016 senior volunteer. He's here to tell us about his year and to introduce the 2017 senior volunteer <coughs> nominees. Thank you very much, Donna. Is this on? This is on. 
Well, before I begin, I, I have to give my personal congratulations and thanks to my very dear friend, Harry Narkin. You know, I've told you this to your face a number of times. When I grow up, I want to be Harry Narkin. Uh, you're my hero. I've had the pleasure of working with you for many, many years, and I just love and adore you. The community can't do enough to thank you. So let me talk a little bit about volunteering, because that's what we're really all about. Last year at this time, I was laying in bed sick as a dog and was unable to, uh, to make the Senior of the Year event. And that, uh, that kind of broke my heart because uh, it's an event that I've always had a great deal of respect for, and mainly because of what it represented. It talked about what we are all about, which is the volunteer spirit that's made Thousand Oaks kind of unique among communities. It talked about volunteering and the work that the uh, volunteers actually do. They recognize it and celebrate it, so it's a huge event. But the good news is that I'm all well this year and I intend to be there tomorrow to, uh, to welcome all and to congratulate the, uh, this year's nominees who are with us here today. And I will, I, will, uh, I will introduce them a little later on. But I did want to say a few words about volunteering and specifically maybe what it has meant to me. Um, when I retired years ago, about 13, 14 years ago, I had no real idea what it was I, I wanted to do with myself. I mean, I have hobbies that I, that I still participate in, but I still needed something concrete to get me off the couch. And I wasn't sure what that was going to look like. I wanted it to be something with meaning, some sense of purpose. Again, not sure what, what that would be. But I read a, a statistic, a, a statistic, by the way, that, that has been quoted many, many times in this very room. And the statistic was that people who volunteer live longer, healthier, happier lives. Well, <laughs> you know, that, that seemed like a, a slam dunk thing to me, uh, kind of hard to lose with that, something I definitely ought to look into, and I did. But what I want to tell you about, I think, is my very first volunteer experience. I've told this story before, and a couple of you have already heard it, but I want to tell it again because it, it goes to the heart, at least, of what volunteering has meant to me. I saw an ad in the Acorn years ago where Parks and Rec was looking for someone to, to help out with a, a program they call the Therapeutic Sports Program. And what that was, was a program for young adults with Down syndrome. And once a week, we would go and do a different sport. We'd play softball one week and volleyball the next. We'd play bocce ball and, and we played tennis. But the very first thing that I did, it was basketball. And I had no idea the day I, I showed up there what to expect. I, I wasn't sure if I had anything to, to offer. I had no expertise in Down syndrome, and I didn't know what to expect from, you know, from uh, the, the, the leader and the kids, and all I did know was that I was going to show up, and I did. And we started off the, the session. Um, I, you know, I met the coordinator, and she introduced me to the seven or eight kids that were part of this program. Kids, they were, they were young adults, 18, 19, 20 years old, something like that, most of them. And we started off doing basketball-ish things, uh, you know, throwing the ball back and forth, bouncing it to each other, uh, attempting to maybe dribble the ball, that sort of thing. But then I got paired off with, with a young lady whose goal it was to make a basket. She wanted to put the ball in the hole. So we parked ourselves underneath the, the backboard and, and we began our process. And I got to tell you, it was a long process. She would throw the ball and it wouldn't go anywhere near that backboard. And she would skitter off and go get the ball and come back and she would set herself up again and try again. And this went over and over and over again. Shoot, chase the ball, come back. Shoot, chase the ball, come back. 
And all this time, I'm encouraging her as, most, as, as best I can. And I'm giving her her tips. You know, I knew a little bit about it. You know, uh, bend your legs a little bit. Uh, hold it like this. Uh, follow through. That sort of thing. But on it went, over and over again. She'd throw the ball up in the air, take off after it, come back. And then this one time, she threw the ball up in the air, and it hit the backboard and went straight through the net. The shriek of joy that came out of that child. I swear to God, I can still feel it right this minute. Right this very minute, that <laughs> feeling. To think that I had some infinitesimally small contribution to that moment of unbridled joy. God, what a feeling. And you know, it's a feeling that that you, you can't buy that feeling, you can't borrow it from a friend, you can't go on Amazon and get it. You want that feeling, you got to show up. You got to show up. You know, you ask a, a volunteer, I suppose if we asked all of the volunteers that are, that are being recognized as nominees of Senior of the Year here tonight, today, why they do it, why they volunteer, People have asked me that question over the years. <laughs> I thought that was an odd question, but you know, they said, well, you know, if you're going to spend all the time, why don't I have a job, make some money? But the answer you usually get if you ask that question of anyone who volunteers is that some version of I get much more than I give. And my experience with that young lady under the basket was one where I got so much more than I gave. I truly believe that that feeling or some version of that feeling is why myself, all of this year's nominees, all of you people, the thousands of people who volunteer in this city unselfishly every single day, it's why we do what we do. Volunteering is, is it's not a job, it's not a a task is not some chore you gotta gotta scratch off your to-do list. It's a privilege. And volunteering for me these thirteen years has enriched my life beyond my ability beyond my ability to, to put it into words. And as for what I have to say about that, I will close with a simple thank you for that privilege. You've changed my life, thank you. Now I would like to introduce, one at a time, and I'll need my glasses for this, this year's nominees who I'm going to invite up to tell us a little bit about themselves and who nominated them. And first up will be Mary Ann Best. Mary Ann, would you join me please? I'm gonna read it. <laughs> Hello, my name is Mary Ann Best and was nominated by Dave and Val Gludes by Neighbors. Wait a little closer, Mary Ann. Let me get it here like this. Hello, my name is Mary Ann Best and I was nominated by Dave and Val Gludes my Neighbors. I volunteer because I have a chance to give back to the community and I meet interesting and interesting people. And after I worked 45 years, eight hours a day, I had to find something to do. So. I ended up taking the Los Robles Hospital, 25 years I've been there, and I volunteered for the 20 years the Thousand Oaks Police Department where I met Harry, <laughs> and Harry taught me how to do fingerprints, right Harry? <laughs> and in the Sheriff's Department, downstairs. Okay, then I volunteered about 15 years at Ascension Lutheran Church. I answered the phones while they had their staff meetings, and so on and so forth, and I volunteered, or I said donated, seven and a half gallons of blood to the, uh, to the Blood Donor Association, which is a United Blood, I believe. And that's supposed to have helped 880 people, the 61 pints I've donated. And I appreciate being honored for this thing to do tonight. Thank you. Next up is Annie Gallagher. Annie?
as close Thank as you, you can. Yeah. Hey, would you prefer to? I think this will, this should work just fine. Thank you for nominating for me, and I've been working at senior center for twenty four years. And the people is so good to us. I'm really joined with the people. I really love people. I thank you for nominate for me. Thank you, Annie. <clears throat> Next up is Patricia Grant. Patricia? Commissioners, it's nice to be here today. Uh, as you've heard, my name is Pat Grant. I have been nominated by the Senior Volunteer of the Year Award by the Caneo Senior Volunteer Program, which works out of the Global Center. I, and you've just heard a report about them. I've been a member of the advisory board for this group since 1994 and presently serve as vice chair. Our main mission is to recruit seniors for the many volunteer opportunities that are available in our community. In addition, we work to raise money for some of the events and services we provide for seniors, okay, such as the health fair, the boutique that we run over there, and the luncheon at the North Ranch Country Club that we provide during the holiday season. That luncheon is for volunteers who have accumulated 150 hours or more of volunteer service during the year. In addition to the work that I do with CSVP, I am involved presently with Community Conscience, the School Attendance Review Board, where we work with students who have attendance problems in the district, the California Museum of Art, Thousand Oaks, and the Caneo Las Virginas Future Foundation, to name a few. And I guess the question to answer is, why do I volunteer? Number one, I really like coming up with solutions to problems that face local students and organizations. I love interacting with people, be it youngsters or members of the organizations uh, that I serve with, and I've built many lasting friendships with some of these people. In addition, I like the sense of being needed and seeing a job well done. Helping to plan events such as the Mardi Gras Ball, senior congresses, youth congresses, and fundraisers for the art museum, it's a real challenge, and I like that. And last, I love this region, and specifically the city of Thousand Oaks. Our family moved here in 1964, just in time to vote for incorporation. All of our kids went to school through the school system here. There is a sense of obligation that I feel to this community to do what I can to keep this a great place to live. And last, at this point in my life, having retired in 1993 from the school district, I have the time to commit to volunteering. Thank you. All right, next up, Irv Kerner. Irv? Good afternoon, my name's Irv Kerner. I, I volunteer presently with the uh, Ombudsman or Long-Term Care for, uh, Services of Ventura. I've uh, been doing this for 16 years. My wife is, <laughs> is my commitment. Every time something comes up, my name gets thrown in a basket. Uh, I've done um, volunteer work for the um, Boy Scouts. I've done volunteer work with the uh, ba ba baseball, um, Cadeo Valley baseball units. Um, I even was a member, a, a joiner in the uh, Cadeo Valley Days Parade for one year. Uh, helped make up and put together a, a float that my kids joined uh, belonged to because they were with the school that decided that they were going to have a float. 
And so naturally my wife says, they need help. So there I was. And that's how I got in with the, the ombudsman, senior, the uh, long-term care f uh, seniors. Um, I was retiring in, in 2000, 2001, and my wife, her comment was, you're not staying home. Uh, this is, you know, I'm not going to have you around the house all day long, so better find something to do. Well, I went to the star, and um, there was a whole list of, of different organizations that needed help. And so uh, because my mother had been in a facility, uh, I thought, well, won't the ombudsman sound like something I might, you know, be able to give back after she spent time and so I, I went down and, and talked to the, the people that were down there at the time. And um, I spent about, I don't know, about 30, 40 minutes talking to uh, the um, coordinator. And I'm thinking, this is not me. I mean, I'm an engineer by trade. I can't see what I'm going to be doing handling helping seniors. I mean, I've never dealt with seniors. I've dealt with corporate people. And we talked, like I said, for about 40 minutes. And at the end of it, I thought, oh, well, I'll have to see if I can find something else. And she turned around to me. She says, we have a class that starts Monday. I'll see you then. And that was 16 years ago, and I'm still at it. Uh, not only do we just volunteer and help with the seniors, but we have classes that help us to determine and f help and find ways of helping seniors. I mean, it's not just, uh, most of the time all we do is just talk with them. I mean, we spend time with them because there's so many of them that never see anybody else. I mean, we're the only ones that come and see them. The first, the re main reason I stayed with it was the fact that the, one of the seniors that I met at a small six-bed facility, she called me into her room, and she said, can you sit and talk with me? And I said, well, sure, that's what I do. So I sat, and I sat and talked and talked, and I must have been there about 40, 40 minutes, maybe an hour. And she said, you're the only one that comes to see me. And I've been stuck with it ever since. You can't get away from it because these people need your help. And so here I am, and I guess I'll just have to stick it out for a couple more years because there's still more seniors that I haven't met yet. So thank you for my wife for nominating me. <laughs> that's that's my, my throw, in, throw the name in a basket, <laughs> no matter which basket it is. And so here I am. Thank you again. And uh, I hope the others do well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, the next one up is a duo. We've got Lorraine Nesbitt and David Nesbitt. Guys. That's all right, I can take it. Okay. You're tall, I'm short, so I'll, I'll get it first. Okay. I'm Lorraine Nesbitt, and we are the, the Nesbitt duo, who uh, were nominated by a most um, amenable volunteer with, within this community who was named Cynthia Binkson. And it's interesting because Cynthia and I met at a meeting where only God chooses the members, and that's the Mothers of Twins Club, because Cynthia and I both have twins, and it is truly a volunteer organization within the community. However, throughout the years, when her children and my children were in AYSO, somebody needed to be the coach. And since I had twins, I got to coach the boys' team and the girls' teams. So throughout the years, we have continued in our little quest for volunteerism, and our paths often cross the state Coach Museum, uh, wherever else we, there might be a volunteer tea, et cetera, et cetera. But the reason I volunteer, and I've pulled my husband into volunteer with me frequently, is the fact that it must come in my genes. My grandparents, who hailed from Europe, 
were hel often helped various people. For example, during the time when they had the Hungarian uprising, they sponsored people in the United States because people couldn't just flee the country. They had to be sponsored by somebody in the United States. And then I learned how to, in my youth, with my mother being in the PTA and both of our fathers helping at the high school band level, we learned to volunteer by observation, which we passed on to our children through the Mothers of Twins Club and the various organizations. And ultimately, even our grandchildren have been volunteering in their community, which is in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. That is one of, those are some of the reasons, because I don't have a choice, it's within me, I volunteer. But a more specific reason that I volunteer is not only do we lead and give back to our community, we have met and we've been able to share with others who sometimes have a need or a problem that needs to be addressed. And if you just watch what's happening, you can volunteer and jump in. We feel a responsibility to achieve positive results from oftentimes a negative situation. And I love seeing, as so many of the other people have remarked, that beautiful aha moment or the smile of thanks that you get for just doing the simplest of things by maybe passing someone who's needing a meal on the road and handing them a dollar and say, use it wisely, or $5, please buy a meal. So we volunteer, even though we too are seniors, because we are physically able and we can. Thank you, and it's his turn. <laughs> uh, short people. Hi, as Lorraine mentioned, uh, my name is David Nesbitt, and I'm her worser half of the duo. Uh, as, and also she mentioned that Cynthia Bankston called and said she was nominating us for this award. I begged her just to nominate Lorraine, but she wouldn't hear of it, uh, only because in all of our uh, things that we do for donating and for volunteering, Lorraine is the captain in this enterprise, and I'm simply the minion. Uh, we, uh, we moved here from Texas in 1970, which is almost 50 years ago, and I realize we've been donating that entire time, and the the person that had the hardest job as a volunteer was standing beside me, and that was staying home and raising four children. And then they all got involved in sports, and if any of you have children who are in sports, you know you don't volunteer. You know you, you are just labor that has to be there. And fortunately, after about a 1,000 track meets and soccer games and baseball games and every other event that they were in, they all grew up and left home. And kind of like Irv, I retired 17 years ago, and we got involved basically at that point in giving back by more or less looking in the paper and finding people who were having events that, uh, that needed help, typically with uh, fundraising dinners and silent auction items. And when we first started, I think the first year we donated to about four, and what we found out was you're sitting at a dinner with a bunch of people you don't know, and at least one of them who found out that you donated auction items will come up and say, hey, uh, I'm involved with another charity and we've got an event next month, could you donate some auction items? And of course, the only one she can say no to is me. So we donated to everybody that came along to the point that after about five years, we're doing 40 events a year. And in fact, it was funny, we, we ran into Donna just at the McRae Ranch at their fundraiser a couple of weeks ago. And it's always been the same. It's uh, we will donate the items, we'll financially donate, we'll attend the events, and Lorraine will even go, for example, she was just at COU a week ago, uh, decorating all the baskets for them for the fundraiser that they've got coming up. So it, it's become pretty much a full-time job, but it's, it's a job that we enjoy doing for pretty much the same reasons that everybody else has mentioned. It's giving back to the community. And I look at it basically as it's just a small kindness that we can do. And I ran across a quote that I will leave you with from Mark Twain. And he said that kindness is the only language that deaf people can hear and blind people can see. And I think that sums up what volunteering is. And I want to thank the, uh, the Council on Aging for the work that you guys do. Uh, I doubt that... Uh, 
a big percentage of our community understand what you do. And it amazes me because, as far as I know, we all have that same goal of one day being old. So I want to thank you guys for what you do, and uh, thank you for, for the privilege of being a nominee for your award. Thank you. Wow, what a group, huh? We've got one other person uh, that's here, and that's uh, Michael Selig. Michael? Well, I'm last, so maybe I'll just say ditto. <laughs> I, <laughs> I kind of agree with all that. Um, I want to back up a little bit and tell you a little bit about me. I hadn't intended to do this because I was afraid I'd run too long. <laughs> Donna told me to keep it short. Um, I grew up without a father. He died when I was young. I was in a household with three women, two sisters and a mother. And I was very lucky to latch on to some mentors in the neighborhood. And one of these mentors was a blind man, blind from birth, that lived directly across the street, who became one of my best friends. When I quit working in 1995, I had a lot of time to spend with him. And when I would go to his house and talk to him, I found out that he was having a very hard time using his computer. He needed to keep himself busy. You know, blind people are into things like ham radio and things they can do with their hands and their ears. And, and he was very, having a very hard time with his computer. So I went out and got a couple certifi certifications. One uh, as a certified PC uh, repair person and one uh, from Cal Northridge University on assistive technology. And he was my sounding board and over the years, uh, he turned out to be a very, very skilled computer operator. Uh, he just passed away, sadly, at the age of 92. While working with him, I found myself working with some of his blind friends. And from there, it moved into the Braille Institute in Santa Barbara. And from there, it worked into the school district, the local Canal Valley Unified School District, and I, what I would do is I would go to the homes of some of the kids and people and I would help modify their computers, uh, teach them how to use them, mostly internet and email, which was the thing that everybody has to get into first. I did that for a long while. Um, at the same time, I was following a website called iloveschools.com. It's not in existence anymore. It's been replaced by another one. And local teachers would post listings of things they needed for their classroom. So I would go out and buy these things, and I would travel around to the schools and drop them off. They arts and crafts supplies, maybe a little computer, uh, maybe things for their treasure box, uh, you know, paper, pencils. So I would drive around. I did that for a couple of years, driving around, and I was over making a drop-off at Banyan Elementary School where I had made various drop-offs before. I would just run to the office, drop it off, get in the car, and leave. Kind of shy. Doesn't seem like I'm shy, but I am a little shy. And I made a drop-off one day there, and I was getting in my car, and this woman comes running out to my car. She was a kindergarten teacher. And she said to me, would you please come in the classroom? The kids want to meet the person that's getting them all this stuff. So she dragged me into the classroom, and I was a little nervous about it, you know, a bunch of five-year-olds. You know, <laughs> kick me in the shins, you know, what are they going to do? <laughs> and I will tell you that I went in that classroom, and she convinced me to come a couple days a week for an hour, turned into three days a week, turned into every day. <laughs> And I will tell you, for the last 14 years, this school and those kids have been the love of my life. I do not know where I would be without them. I literally think they have saved my life a few times. But I don't want to get into that. <laughs> Keeping healthy in order so that I could go to school. Okay. Um, 
Why? Why do I love the kids? I've always liked kids. Um, they make me very happy. And I think the main reason that I volunteer, aside for a lot of other reasons, is that it just makes me happy. What I did the last month or so while I was working in the school, because I'm there every day, morning, time school's out, I started writing things down that make, every time something made me happy, I wrote it down. So, bear with me when I tell you a few of the things that make me happy. It makes me happy to know that what I learned in life can be put to good use. It makes me happy to know I can make someone else's job easier. It makes me happy when teachers and staff continually tell me I'm appreciated. It makes me happy to look into the face of a five-year-old when something clicks or when they've accomplished something for the first time that they didn't think they could do. It makes me happy towards the end of kindergarten when five and six-year-olds can read and read fairly well, and I was a big part of that. It makes me happy when I'm out for a few days and the children tell me they missed me. It makes me happy when a high school student comes to me and tells me that I made a big impression on her when she was in kindergarten, that she still remembered me. It makes me happy when I'm stopped at a red light and a bunch of kids in the next car are banging on the window and yelling, hey, it's Mr. Selig, hello, hello. It makes me happy when emotional mothers come to me and thank me for helping their child overcome the fear of doing something. This has happened many times where they come with tears in their eyes. My child would come home every day. They were so afraid to try jumping rope or they were so afraid to do this. Then they would finally do it. It makes me happy to know so many children who have lost a tooth, a new tooth, a wiggly tooth, I'm kept informed. <laughs> it made me very happy when I set up some technology for a visually impaired student in second grade who could not see the board. And when she saw the board for the first time, she said to me, it works. It made me very happy, and this happened just two weeks ago, when a mom put her one-month-old baby in my arms. And she took her arms, she took the baby back, and she said to me, there, when she's in kindergarten, you can tell her you held her when she was an infant. And she had done that with her two older daughters. <laughs> it shows you how long I've been there. <laughs> Working at school is like having 450 grandchildren. In fact, I tell people, how many grandchildren do you have? 450. That's the school. Actually, it's 452, because I have two. <laughs> Volunteering in a school, I think, is a win, win, win. It's a win for the kids. They get the personal attention, which they need. It's a win for the teachers. They are very, very overworked. I would never realize that so much until I started working in kindergarten. I thought kindergarten teachers just went to school, read books, passed out milk and graham crackers, and that was it. These teachers are very overworked, and they need all the help they can get. And we've actually had a few moms and grandmas that keep coming back to our classroom to help, even though the kids have passed out of the grade or even out of the school. And they're very, very happy that they come. I, it's, uh, and it's a win for me. I, um, I get such joy from young children, and it's a good way to keep very involved in the community. Uh, I learn everything from the moms, from the kids. And if I don't, wasn't doing it, I don't know, I missed all that. I was so busy working when my kids were in school. So I feel like I'm getting it back. So, thank you. I was nominated by Banyan Elementary School. <laughs> There is uh, one more nominee that isn't able to be here today. So, but to give us a little background of who that is, I'll turn the meeting back over to Commissioner Mortimer, and she will be talking about, is it Skip Shaver? Mm -hmm. Skip okay, and thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Jim. So Skip provided me her speech 
Um, she was nominated by Camila Cruz de Sanchez. Having been an educator all of my life, it is important to me to continue serving, particularly within the educational community, in hopes of providing a bit of a difference, motivation, and investment in young lives. Education and literacy are my passions, are essential for a strong community, and key to understanding and bridging differences in our world. I volunteer not only because I feel it must be done, but with the goal of contributing a bit of good in my small corner of our community and the world. It's fun, rewarding, and gives one an opportunity to be involved, problem solve, and to connect with motivating and inspiring people such as Camilla and her peers at Neighborhood for Learning and Laura, the librarian at Caneo Elementary. Laura has updated and enhanced the Caneo Elementary School Library and has students clamoring to be in the library and check out books. It is a joy to see, be with, and encourage these students who want to read and be read to, and to realize that often their enthusiasm motivates the rest of their family members to place more emphasis and time on reading and learning. Camilla, a Neighborhood for Learning coordinator, has heart and passion that are larger than humongous, and she is ever aware of needs of our neighborhood families. Being in a classroom with four and five-year-olds is exciting, funny, and rewarding as we see the growth and enthusiasm develop throughout the school year. The program offers an opportunity for children who might not otherwise have the advantages of pre-kindergarten, thus placing them at a disadvantage upon entering kindergarten. A number of our families benefit through added support programs offered by the Neighborhood for Learning. Many others will no doubt express this thought. In so many ways, the benefits of volunteering exceed what I offer, and I am appreciative for the opportunities to be involved. Whoa. Um, very special thanks to Commissioner Mortimer and to our 2016 Senior of the Year, Jim Searden, for putting together really, really wonderful, meaningful program. And thank you to the other nominees for coming today and sharing your thoughts with us. Really, really impactful and really wonderful. Thanks to all of you, and we hope to see all of you tomorrow night at the Senior of the Year Award Banquet. Are there still tickets available? Tickets are still available at the door at Goble for six dollars. Six dollars. So this is this is a wonderful evening. Um, please, um, I know I know you will enjoy it if you come. I know you will enjoy it. So this is our last televised meeting of the year, and I'd like to take just a minute to thank all of the commissioners for all the work they do between the commission meetings. Those of you who volunteer on commissions know that the bulk of the work is done between the meetings, and that, that is certainly the case with this commission. They do the research and prepare the reports, and special thanks to city analyst Francine Spriegel, whose work is absolutely instrumental in the smooth production of all these commission meetings and all of our other special events. So with that, I'm going to close the meeting, and thank you, and we will see you at the next televised meeting, fall 2017. Good night.